Speaking of something else tonight, South Africa is running out of burial space and undertakers are exploring various options to avert a crisis in the industry. Aquamation is a fairly new option for South Africa and has been praised for its environmental benefits as well. It uses heat, pressure and water to dispose of bodies. But how exactly does it all work? Let's speak to Adrian Bester, Corporate Services General Manager at AFBOB. Adrian, a very good evening to you. Thank you for coming in. So, Aquamation, I was not aware of this process until we ran a story on it uh, 24 hours ago. How exactly does it work in the simplest language? All right, Tamikila, thank you. Yes, in the simplest language, um, it's a chemical process, uses high alkalinity in water. Uh, we're talking about a pH of around 14 that basically digests the soft tissue of the body. Um, we remain at the end of the process with the bone minerals, which is basically calcium which is then processed uh, into a fine powder and given back to the family as would they receive ashes with a normal flame-based cremation. And the water that comes from this, of course, goes into the municipal water system. It does. All right. It does. It goes into the, the normal wastewater system. Uh, the water that is released is 100% sterile, so there's nothing alive in it. There can't be any DNA in it. There's no RNA in it. Um, it, it, it breaks the components of the body down to the most basic building blocks. So um, the water is also treated so that the pH comes down to a level that is no longer corrosive um, and, and we release at about 40 degrees centigrade which is uh, less than your bath water would normally be. So the water is completely harmless, uh, goes into the normal treatment facilities and will circulate as does any other wastewater. Mm, I want to talk to you about the fact that you as AFBOB are the first funeral home in this country to go the acclimation route. Why was it important for you to do that? Because increasingly we're told that more and more South Africans are opting for the cremation option versus burial. So why this third one? All right, so we consider ourselves the leaders in our industry. So on a continuous basis, we look around the world and see uh, what happens in this industry and where the developments and innovations are. So about six years ago, we became aware of acclimation. So the process has been around for a long time. Uh, it's been used in the USA for at least 12 years. Um, so around five years ago, a colleague and myself visited the USA. We investigated the technology. And we believe that this is just uh, another option that I think a lot of South Africans would actually opt for. Um, it's environmentally substantially more friendly than flame-based cremation. Uh, uses a lot less energy, has a smaller carbon footprint, uh, doesn't produce any air emissions. Uh, so from our perspective, the, the uh, intention is just to provide another option. The average South African does not have as much money as the average American, which is where you went, of course, sure. on your research expedition. Absolutely. Is acclimation at this point an option for South Africans across social classes, or is it on the price year end? Aquamation will cost more or less the same as flame-based cremation. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of factors that actually influence the cost of a funeral, uh, okay. whether, whether that be a burial or a cremation or, or aquamation. So one of the very basic costs that will remain the same across the board is the cost of the, of the undertaking services. So that remains the same irrespective of what route is followed. The, the factors that actually influence that cost is what coffin or casket the, the family prefers, and then the additional services that they want. So people can go very extravagant and they have um, lots of family cars and limousines and buses and catering and home tents and lots of other things that can actually influence the cost. At a basic level, flame-based cremation, aquamation and burial should cost more or less the same. Mm. I get that the, um, the water that is used in this process, of course, you said, goes back straight into the municipal water management system. But how much is wasted? Because with South Africa, we do have a very serious concern as far as saving water and the various drought concerns. 100% correct. So a, a single aquamation will use between 300 and 600 litres of water. So that's... Uh, depending on the size of the of the uh, deceased that has been... 300 to 600 litres? Litres, that's correct. Oh, oh, that's a lot of water. Well, actually it's not. So even in Cape Town, where we've had very, very strict water restrictions, mm -hmm. um, the, the aim was always to, uh, to, to get to a point where every person uses about 70 litres. So if you have a household of just four people, you're already looking at 280 litres um, of water. So... If we do two cremations a day or aquamations a day, which is our target, uh, we do two a day, we'll use on average probably around 1,000 litres. So you're looking at a, more or less what four households would use under 
conditions where they actually try to save as much water as possible. Mm. I alluded to the burial space crisis that South Africa is facing in the coming years. We've heard some cemeteries in Johannesburg, for example, running out of space. You go to the Free State, you hear where I'm from, much of the same message as well. Sure. Give us an idea of how grave the situation is. Yes, I think um, it, it has to be seen in perspective. We are not in the position of countries like the Netherlands, for example, where, where space is really at a premium. So in South Africa, my guess is that at some point uh, there will be more cemeteries put out. They will just probably be further outside of town. Um, and so it's be the current cemeteries that we have available, we know that there is a shortage of space. So lots of our current cemeteries are coming to the end of life. But I, I believe there will for a long time still be burial space. Mm. And I want to put this conversation that we're having into context because later we're going to bring in uh, a religious and cultural scholar to just look at the implications as far as that is concerned because we know in South Africa that when it comes to uh, burials for the majority, people are either quite religious and they observe certain uh, religious rites when the time for burial comes or there are cultural processes that come with the traditional burial. Sure. Do you pay special consideration to that? Do things like cremation and aquamation lend themselves to those concerns? Look, I th from, from FBOP's perspective, it's not our intention to convert people from one methodology to the other. So it's purely an option, a third option that is made available. As far as burial is concerned, I think the, you know, people underestimate what, what variation there is also in burial. So we all refer to um, in-ground burial, so in a grave, but there's also above ground burial, and it's available in South Africa, although many people don't realize that we do actually have operating mausoleums in this country where you can bury above ground. Um, and so there's the, the option of flame-based cremation and the option of aquamation. So there are a number of, of different ways that people can go. But most South Africans seem to still prefer to be buried at a cemetery. In ground burial, I think, is, is the vast majority of our people still confirms, uh, prefers that, sure. Adrian, thank you so much for coming in tonight. That was Adrian Bester with Avbob. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Well,